I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I want to show you how to make this vegan mashup of crispy katsu smothered in Japanese curry sauce. And you'd never guess it was plant-based, so stick around. Katsu kare consists of two parts. There's the katsu or cutlet, and the kare which is just the Japanese pronunciation of curry. I've shown you the best way to make a meaty and flavorful tofu katsu before. And to give you a quick recap, it's made by freezing the tofu before pressing it to remove any excess water. This gives the tofu a meaty texture, and then I paint on a mixture of marmite and vegetable stock to infuse it with tons of umami. Then I batter and bread it before deep frying the katsu until it's golden brown and crisp. For my vegan katsukare, I also like to fry up some colorful vegetables for some contrasting tastes and textures. If you missed that recipe, I'll include a link at the end of this video and in the description below so you can check it out. But let's have a look at our ingredients for the Japanese curry sauce. For the curry base, I'm using 120 grams of carrot, 200 grams of onion, 15 grams of ginger, 15 grams of garlic, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and 14 grams of Japanese curry powder. We're gonna season this with two cups of vegetable stock, two tablespoons of date syrup, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one tablespoon of potato starch, and one teaspoon of cocoa powder. For our vegetables, I have 80 grams of mild green peppers, 80 grams of red bell pepper, 150 grams of Japanese eggplant, and 150 grams of kabocha or Japanese pumpkin. To prep the vegetables, you want to dry them well after washing so they don't spatter too much when you fry them. I like to cut my peppers into long strips, and then you can use the knife to cut out the white pith and seeds. The process for the red bell pepper is basically the same. For the eggplants, I'm gonna slice them in half, and then I'm gonna cut slits into the skin a few millimeters apart. This helps the eggplant to cook through quickly while preventing the skin from getting tough and leathery. Finally, for the kabocha, I'm gonna trim off any bits of stem, cut the wedge in half, and then I'm gonna cut each piece into thin slices. Kabocha can be pretty tough, so use a sharp knife and be careful not to cut yourself. Now that our vegetables are prepped, this is a good time to bread your vegan katsu. Then I'm gonna prepare the seasonings for our curry sauce by adding the potato starch, cocoa powder, vegetable stock, soy sauce, date syrup, and tomato paste to a bowl and mixing it all together until everything is dissolved. Cocoa powder might seem like an odd addition, but it adds an earthy depth to the curry that makes it taste like it's been simmering for hours. Okay, let's set this aside and start working on our curry base. We need to puree our aromatics and vegetables, so I'm gonna start by slicing the ginger and garlic. And I'm gonna get these into a food processor. Then I'm gonna slice up the onion and toss those in with the ginger and garlic. Finally, I'm gonna slice up our carrots and get those into the food processor as well. Then I'm gonna secure the lid and puree the vegetables. If you don't have a food processor, you can also use the rasp side of a box grater or a daikon grater. Be sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl a few times to ensure you get the puree nice and smooth. Once it's looking like smooth applesauce, 
you want to transfer the puree to a frying pan. I recommend using a non-stick pan to keep things from burning. Now I'm going to add the baking soda and stir it in. This is going to raise the pH of our puree, which helps to speed up caramelization significantly. Let's get this over to the stove, and I'm going to bring this to a boil to evaporate the excess liquid. While we wait for that, let's start to preheat our frying oil to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 Celsius. After about 5 minutes of boiling and stirring, your vegetable puree should turn into a nice thick paste like this. Now I'm going to add the oil to this so we can start caramelizing this mixture. Caramelized onions are one of the cornerstones of a good Japanese style curry, so don't rush this. Just keep stirring and after 5 or 6 minutes, you should end up with a shiny tan paste like this. Next, I'm going to add the Japanese curry powder and stir it into the caramelized aromatics to toast it. Curry powder burns easily, so make sure you work it in quickly. Now I'm going to pour in our seasonings and stir it all together. Turn down the heat to maintain a gentle simmer, and it's time to fry up our vegetables and katsu. While we wait for the curry sauce to cook, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I didn't make my vegetable dashi from scratch. Instead, I used these vegetable dashi packs from the sponsor of this video. On the umami. Their products meld the Japanese culinary tradition with science to create foods that are super rich in umami. I'm particularly fond of these dashi packs, and whether it's their traditional Japanese dashi or these plant based vegetable or tomato dashi packs, they make it super easy to make a flavorful stock in a matter of minutes. The packets are like tea bags, and since they're just filled with dried vegetables and seasonings, they can also be torn open and used to season food directly. I love using these to amp up the umami in soups, sauces, and dressings. And they even make for a delicious way to season fried rice. They're currently offering free shipping on all orders worldwide, so hit the link in the description down below to order this simple ingredient that'll make almost anything taste better. I recommend frying the vegetables first and doing the katsu last so it's nice and crisp when you serve it. The kabocha takes the longest, so I'm going to start with that. Basically, you want to fry it until it starts to brown around the edges. This will take about 2-3 to three minutes. For the eggplant, add them to the oil skin side down. This sets the purple color of the anthocyanins in the skin so they don't turn brown. Because we've cut slits into these, they should cook through in about a minute and a half. Finally, I'm going to add the peppers and cook them until the skin just starts to bubble. This will take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. Now we can fry up our vegan katsu. And when it's done, I'm going to slice it up. Just listen to how crispy that is. To plate up our katsukare, I'm going to set our tofu katsu on a bed of rice. And then I'm going to arrange our fried vegetables off to one side. Beautiful, aren't they? Finally, I'm going to pour our Japanese curry sauce all over our katsu and vegetables. And our vegan katsukare is done! Words can't describe how good this curry smells, so I'm just going to eat it. Itadakimasu! Alright, let's grab a piece of our katsu here and get a lot of curry on there. Oh, the katsu is crispy on the outside and it's both meaty in texture and taste on the inside. And when you dip it in that curry sauce, it just takes it to the next level. And you know, you'd never guess there's no meat in here because of the amount of umami, and that's all thanks to those vegetable dashi packs by On The Umami. 
All right, let's try out some of these vibrant vegetables here. I got a pepper. Oh yeah, that's so nice. The vegetables have been oil blanched, which preserves their crunchy texture and beautiful color, but it also brings out a wonderful sweetness in them. And because we haven't put any breading or batter on the outside, they barely soaked up any oil. And with all of these colors, tastes, and textures, you can keep going back between the components and never get bored. That's addictively good. Well, I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy the rest of this, but check out this playlist for more mouth-watering vegan recipes. And I'll catch you in the next one.